In this video, we're going to be finishing up our line trace event by shooting at some targets. We'll go ahead and create those targets, and then we'll finish up the event to have it check for hitting the targets, and then destroying them when they are hit. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we last left off, we were looking at our line trace itself, and we were able to successfully fire. What we need to do now is do something when we hit something. So when you hit something, you're going to get out of your line trace a structure for what you hit, as well as a return value of if you hit something. Let's go ahead and make this smart. We only want to do something if we hit something. So we'll hook up a simple if event here. Basically, this is only going to fire if we hit something. Now let's look at our hit structure itself. Now like any other structure, there's two ways of handling this. We can either split the structure apart, or we can break the structure using a break node. I personally prefer to split it apart because it leaves one less node. But if we break this apart using break hit result, this is what we're going to go ahead and see. Let's break this apart, for example, just so we have one less node. But if we were to split it, you could see right here, we end up getting everything in order. Let's recombine them, hook it back up by break hit result, and we'll go from there. So what we have here is if we have something hit, we're going to fire off our true. And if we hit nothing, we'll fire off our false. And we're going to want to do something once we hit something. Now, as we saw in our previous video, we were able to use blueprint interfaces to pass information back or forth, regardless of what we hit. Also using blueprint interfaces, we can determine if something is hittable by determining if it actually implements that interface. And that's what we're going to end up doing. But first things first, we need something to hit. So let's go ahead and make a target. Let's since we're going to go ahead and call this a target and we have a folder for our character, let's make a folder for target. Then let's go ahead and make a new target that we're going to fire at. So the target's going to be pretty simple. Since we don't really want to do anything on its own right now, it's not going to use the AI. It's just going to be a generic target. We're going to make it a generic actor. So we'll do a new blueprint of the actor class. And we'll call it, oh, let's call it target. And we'll do BP at the end of it, so we know it's a blueprint. Let's open it up, and let's go ahead and edit it. This is going to be very simple. We're just going to need a root, which knows where it's at, and then we're going to put, let's say, a cube inside of it, so we have something to actually hit. Now, by default, a default, by default, the default actor blueprints come like this. And it's going to have this little default scene root. That's a lot of defaults. And the default scene root is annoying because it has this little sphere indicating where it's at. If we were to, for example, to drop this in the world, you can see that's where it's at. I don't like it, so I'm going to replace it. Now the default scene root is a scene root. So if you go into add component and type in scene, you'll find scene, which is a scene root. Let's go and name this root and replace the default scene root with my new root by dragging it and dropping it, and it's now going to replace it. Now after all that talking, all we basically did was get rid of the little circle. We still have a scene root, it's just simply named something different, and we no longer have that annoying circle. Since we're going to be replacing this with a mesh, we don't need it. Speaking of the mesh, let's add one in. Now since we're using the engine, and we don't have any real meshes that comes with it, we can use the default component for a cube. So let's go ahead and add component cube. And now we have a cube. That's it. This is the basics of our target. If we were to go back into the scene, drag and drop a few targets onto our wall, we now have target set up to fire. It's a little hard to actually see. So let's go ahead and take our light source. Let's make it movable. That way we don't have to worry about static lighting being built. And let's go ahead and rotate it. And we'll make it something more like, let's go like that. Now it's a little easier to see. Now we have three targets that we are going to be able to fire at. We can't actually do anything yet. There's no actual logic, but we have the basis. So next thing, now that we have a generic target, 
we actually need it to actually be able to do something. Keep in mind I mentioned we're going to use a blueprint interface to talk back and forth. So let's create our interface. Same way as before. Blueprint. Blueprint interface. Let's call this one the target BP BPI for the target blueprint blueprint interface. Now, what are we going to do with this one? Well, it's going to basically handle being hit. So let's call it handle was hit. And that should be pretty much it. Basically, when this blueprint is hit, it's going to fire off the handle was hit and it's going to do something appropriately. Let's test and make sure this works. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of our default functions inside of our target blueprint. Let's tell our target blueprint that it's going to implement the target blueprint interface and let's save it. Now one of the things we did earlier was we debugged and tested because we want to make sure this actually works. So let's set that up. So was hit, add event, event handle was hit, and print string. That's it. Now we know if we're calling this properly, it's going to print the string hello. Let's go into our character. And let's call that hit event on anything we hit. So at this point, if we've hit something, we're going to fire off a true. So we need to call the handle was hit. So was hit, handle was hit message. We need a target. Well, this is whatever we want to call handle was hit on. Conveniently, one of your hit results is called the hit actor. This is whatever actor we hit with our line trace. We'll plug it in. We'll go ahead and hit play. And we'll fire off into nowhere. And nothing's happening. If we fire at one of our targets, well, you'll see it hits. It does a line trace properly. And on the top left corner, we have the message, hello. If I fire to the side of it, nothing happens. If we fire at it, well, then it goes ahead and says hello. That's it. We now actually have it where we could fire. We can hit something, and we are successfully able to send the event. Now, technically, we are sending the handle was hit message to our wall right here. Because like I said, it will send that message to anything. It's up to the anything to implement it. Now we can go ahead and let that happen or we could use the does implement interface function, the node. And what that's going to do is basically check to see if the object implements an interface and if it does, return true or false. So for sanity sakes, let's go ahead and do that. This is pretty simple. Drag off of the actor, does implement, and we're done. Next thing we're going to do is do an if statement and hook up our if statement after our if statement. Now it may seem kind of silly that we're doing an if and an if, but we're basically reducing the amount of work that our stuff, that our event has to do. We also have our hit actor here being drawn off a couple of times. We might want to clean that up in a little bit. Let's go and just rewire this here, and we'll go and wire this here. And we're going to go and set this up. So does implement interface takes an object, takes an interface. So this is going to be a target interface and then returns true or false. And in the case of this, if it's true, we're going to go ahead and call handle was hit on it. So now if we run this, we shouldn't see any difference. Firing at the ground, nothing. Firing at the wall, nothing. Firing at our target, hello message. The difference being here is when we hit the wall, it does not implement the interface, therefore we never actually call the handle was hit on it, and we're just saving a little bit of cycles. So, now that we've handled being hit, now that we know it successfully gets hit, let's just go ahead and destroy it. That way we can wrap this up. We'll go ahead and type in destroy actor, assuming I can find it. And that's it. All we did is replace our print string with a destroy actor. We'll go ahead and hit play. We'll fire at our targets and they will be destroyed. 
Now at this point in time, since we've gone ahead and we know that we can actually hit something, we know it's successfully destroying our targets, let's go ahead and disable our line trace debugging and clean it up a little bit. Go back to here, change our debug type to none, test it one more time just to be safe, fire at our targets, and look at that. We have the basics of our FPS right now. We can move, we can fire, we can hit a target, and we can have the target react. That's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. In the next one, we're going to set up our basic score tracking system, so that way when we hit targets, we get score values.